Hey everybody, Shane Reynolds here. Welcome to Destin for Walton Beach. If you're visiting us here on the Emerald Coast, obviously you're gonna to wanna to get out on the water. So we need to talk about our waterways because it's probably a little different than it is back home. So let's go over some of the basics to make sure your experience is safe and enjoyable. First and most important is driving while impaired. Don't be that guy. No, it's not a car on the road, but that doesn't change anything. Pick a designated driver, preferably someone with experience driving a boat. Next, let's talk about no wake zones. A no wake zone means the vessel needs to operate at idle speed so it doesn't create a wake, which is essentially a wave created by the vessel's movement. Other speed zones, such as slow down minimum wake, which means the vessel must operate fully off plane and completely settled in the water. These are ticketed offenses, but more importantly, they can create unsafe boating conditions and erode our local ecosystem. Now let's talk about other signage that you might see because there's a lot to take in. But don't feel intimidated, it's pretty simple. Now when you're boating, you gotta exercise good judgment and common courtesy. That means knowing the rules of the water. Generally, vessels that are unable to easily steer or maneuver have the right of way, such as sailboats, charter boats, and barges. Just remember, when you're passing other boats in a channel, give a short blast on the horn to signal the stand-on vessel that they will be overtaken. And then pass to the right or left, depending on the safer outlet. If you're in a head-on situation, stay calm, slow down, and steer to the right. If the other vessel doesn't appear to know the rules, then it's up to you to give way in order to avoid the collision. If you're involved in a collision, dial 911 immediately and flag down other boaters for assistance. Stay calm, make sure all the boaters are wearing life preservers. There's a lot of marine wildlife out here. So in order to keep this ecosystem healthy, we'll need to be responsible in how we handle these critters. Please do not feed them as it disrupts their natural habitat and ability to feed themselves. Also, feeding dolphins is illegal and carries hefty fines. Keep your distance and try not to get close. If you see injured wildlife, contact one of these guys. Remember, we're guests in their home. Let's do our part to keep them safe. High boat congestion is common in this area, especially here in the Destin Harbor, which is all a no-wake zone. You'll see a lot of bigger charter boats backing up, trying to pull out of their slips, so just get out of the way, let them do their thing. Here on the north side of Noriega Point, you'll probably see a lot of boats anchored up. Just pay real close attention to what's going on with all the boat traffic. The channel can get really constricted. And remember, there's no mooring at the mouth of the harbor. The East Pass, also known as the Jetties, which is south of the Destin Bridge, opens up to the Gulf and can be some of the most dangerous areas for boating. Most rental companies won't even allow boaters to enter this area and only the most experienced boaters should consider passing through. If you plan on snorkeling the jetties, the best time is during slack high tide. That's the time between tides, where there's barely any current. When the tides are moving, the current through the pass can be quite strong, especially outgoing. Not only will it sweep you out in seconds, visibility is low due to the outflow from the bay, so it's just not worth it. The diver's flag is recommended to increase visibility to local vessel traffic. So the south side of Noriega Point has some tide pools that are formed by rocks and they're roped off from the open waters. This is a great area for swimmers. Just keep in mind the currents because the boats aren't allowed in these. Keep at least 100 foot distance from swimmers, fishermen, snorkelers, and divers on a navigational channel, 300 feet otherwise. Also, turn your music down so you can hear what's going on around you. That's just common courtesy. Now most of you watching this video are probably heading to Crab Island, which is one of the most popular boating spots in our area. But I want to mention that we've got a ton of other beautiful places to visit and a huge bay to explore. My personal favorite are the Spoils Islands in Fort Walton, where you'll find sandy beaches, shallow waters, and weaker currents. Just keep in mind the bay and the bayous are people's homes, so respect the locals. Now, if you still insist on going to Crab Island, be careful. It's not as easy as it looks. As you approach Crab Island on your vessel, tilt your engine high enough to protect the grassy seabeds and engine propeller from getting damaged. This entire area is a no-wake zone, so slow down. 
have a spotter watching for people, other vessels, and anchor lines. Stay within the channels and find an open spot to anchor with enough space to get out at the end of the day. Once at a safe depth, have someone jump out and guide the boat and assist with anchoring. Your anchor line should have plenty of swinging room from other boats anchored near you. If you're on a personal watercraft, it'll need to be anchored or tied off to a boat. This is the Crab Island Safety Corridor, and it's used for emergency vessels, so don't block it or anchor on it. The safest areas to anchor are middle, north, and west side of Crab Island. The east and south side tend to get pretty dangerous during outgoing tides, so avoid water more than waist deep. Children and inexperienced swimmers should always wear a life jacket. Adults, watch your alcohol intake. Parents, watch your kids. If you're swept off Crab Island, the best plan is to tread water and relax. There's plenty of boaters in the area that can help you out as long as you're treading water. Currents are one of the reasons why we never recommend taking a kayak or a paddleboard or swimming to Crab Island. And if you just listened to everything I said and decided you'd rather not go there on your own, you might want to go and try Okaloosa Island where the currents aren't as strong. Or there's tons of private and public excursions you can book that'll get you there with peace of mind. So you're ready to leave Crab Island, but you're surrounded by boats. No problem. Make sure no one's near your engine when you crank it up. Make sure it starts before you pull the anchor. Just like you came in, have someone walk the vessel out. Just make sure they're never in danger of being in deep water. Once you have a clear path, have them hop on board and head on out. If you're out on the water and you experience some unexpected weather, such as a pop-up storm or fog, make sure your navigational lights are turned on and check the radar or call your rental vendor to see if you should head in. Always bring your mobile phone with you and periodically check the radar so you can have plenty of time to prepare for an incoming storm. Look, we can't wait for you to visit the Emerald Coast and explore our little slice of paradise. We want you to have a great time with family and friends and your safety is important to us. So be considerate, be cautious, use your best judgment, and you'll have an amazing time. For more info on safe boating or to book a rental or tour with some great local vendors, visit BoatOkaloosa.org. You can also visit the Emerald Coast CVB's website at DestinFWB.com for a whole bunch of day trip itineraries for a fun day on the water. Happy boating!